everyone this is a bit of a very different video when it comes to my channel but welcome nonetheless today we are basically looking at my kitchen floor because we have a bit of a haul of um, art supplies and stationery that I wanted to share with you you may or may not know that along with bullet journaling I um, basically started looking into drawing and using watercolors quite a lot and develop a bit of a uh, let's say I would say almost obsession <laughs> with stationery which already was rooted in me it just kind of grew uh, particularly during the pandemic because um, art really calms me and and um, brings me joy so I really focused on that quite a lot um, and since this time I went and did quite a nice um, a little haul I decided I was going to share it with you and eventually maybe start sharing a bit more of my drawing and things like that on the channel as well at some point in the meantime, we're going to get started straight away so that I can at least give you a few tips and ideas and comments uh, on uh, what I bought and why. So the reason for my trip to the art supply store was because I needed to um, restock this um, Pigma Micron 005. It's the thinnest nib they have and I use it very much um, for my drawings and uh, definitely needed to replace it and have a backup of it. So I got two of those. Then I got two of the same brush in the 01 nib, with, which is the size up. But uh, I use them quite a lot as well, so I need to replace it and have a backup. This one, the 02, I kind of started using a bit more than I used before, so I decided to just get one. I have one that is still in good condition, so I just got this one as a backup. And uh, when it comes to pens and things like that, I also decided to get the Mono Zero um, Eraser from Tombow. Hope you can actually see that well. Um, so it's like a very thin precision uh, eraser. Um, and I got the refill to go with it so that's it then we have quite a few watercolors this is not a watercolor box itself it's just something that I did myself but I, I'll tell you more about it later so first of all I got this fine tech I didn't know uh, anything about this brand to be honest um, I, I just saw the watercolors and thought they were really beautiful so I was pretty curious to try it out so the actual box is like a normal tin box and it's just that I got this from the outside cardboard box and stick it in here so that I could have a bit of a swatch um, and, uh, and then the idea of the colors that are inside but look at these guys if you like metallics Aren't these just crazy beautiful? Look at how shiny they are. And I thought the colors were really nice and interesting. So hopefully um, I'm going to have fun with those. Um, it does have a bit of a palette here with three sections. And then on the other side you have these. These are kind of cool. Like it's their own system. But basically it's like... See, you have like a, a round area that you actually just clip onto that little thing there and it stays and they don't move whatsoever. But uh, obviously they're not going to be versatile in the sense that you can only replace them with pans of this particular brand. But hey, if you like the brand and if the, the brand is nice, I haven't tried them yet, so I'll see how they they work. But, um, you know, they're cool. They're pretty. Um, they look very interesting. So I'll see, I'll show you again the swatches. As you can see, you have the amethyst there. I very much like this uh, sapphire blue one. I really like this mystic color because it seems to be kind of like a dual crown so I'm very interested to see how that works 
and then this one seems to be very nice which is pearl gold um i like the copper one as well anyhow they look really cool uh they weren't too expensive they're more or less like van gogh prices um they're supposed to be made in germany as well again i didn't know about fine tech at all but you know i'm willing to give them a shot and see how they go the presentation is pretty cool so let's see how it works then i'm going to show you the van gogh uh watercolor box that i have i didn't buy the full box because actually um i have a story about this um the van gogh uh, watercolors that i have is that one day i was in a shop that is called uh montana colors here in barcelona they're specialized in spray painting but they also have fine art supplies and one day i just was there just rummaging around and i found this van gogh but the plastic version of this palette which is the 24 um, half pans palette and um, it was ridiculously discounted and i was like why are they that bad i was like why would van i had no idea what watercolors were i didn't know the brands i didn't know anything and i was like why would be what why would it be so discounted when it's like van gogh i expect a brand that has such a, a name which happens to be my favorite uh painter um to be bad quality so why is it discounted and he opened it up for me and he said look it, they actually stole someone actually stole two half pans from it and that's the reason why i'm selling at like set it was something ridiculous like 70 percent off or something um so i said well you know what i'm going to take it one it's called Van Gogh. It can't be bad because it's my favorite painter. So there's no way it's going to be bad. I had no idea what I was talking about. Um, although they are very good. <laughs> it's just that I had uh, I didn't know anything about watercolors. But I wanted to try them for a long time. So I said, you know what? I wanted to try watercolors for so long now. Um, this is the opportunity. I'm going to get those. And I'm going to you know, give it a shot and see how it goes. So um, I got that one for like next to nothing. And then I found this very beautiful uh, wooden box on Amazon and I decided to go for it because I really enjoy them. And obviously the Van Gogh uh, watercolors uh, are going to stay one of my favorites just because they were the very first ones that I ever got. So it's kind of fun. And uh, today I'm talking about them because I decided to get these two colors here, which are blues because there was a space here in the palette. It's supposed to be a 24 a half pan palette, but right here, you can actually fit 26. So I was like, well, if I can actually fit 26, I don't see why I wouldn't get myself some extra blues because I like blue. So I got the G5331, which I believe is indigo, if my memory serves me right. And then uh, I got the 570, which again, if my memory serves, serves me right, I think is Ptala blue. So yeah, and this is the swatches of the whole palette, but obviously they don't include the two new ones because I haven't added them. I need to do a new swatch because something happened here with my 506, which I think is the ultramarine. I'm not 100% sure on, on that, so don't quote me, but I believe that's what it is. And uh, yeah, and the other thing that is quite cool is actually this particular uh, wooden version, if you can find it, it actually comes with two brushes by Van Gogh that I really, really enjoy using actually. It's the number four and the number eight, and they're very nice. And um, I don't know, they're, they're supple. I, I really enjoy painting with them, so. Um, it's one of the rare occasions where I actually use the brush from a palette. I don't normally do that even when it comes to makeup. So, uh, But in this case, these brushes are really nice quality, so I use them a lot. And uh, today I got these two extra ones so that my palette is full. There you go. And then this particular box is just a tin box that I got I think it came with the Karen markers 
but I don't store them in here. So I have this empty box and I just use some washi tape on the sides and two Totoro um, little postcards that I was given by one of my followers on Instagram that happens to be a friend. She sent me over that beautiful package with these two postcards and some washi samples and stuff. So I um, I just kept the box and, and used that to kind of uh, personalize it. And these two sets are actually from a Japanese brand called Kuretake. And um, these are just water brushes, by the way. I took them away without telling you anything. These are just my, I have a set of three Sakura water brushes. I don't like them that much. But again, I guess that if you just want to travel and want to have something to just doodle around with, why not? They're very practical. But if I have a choice and if I'm at home, I'd rather paint the normal way. But I have them here, but I, I just happened to store them in here. I didn't buy them today. I actually bought them in Montana Colors. Um, and today I went to um, vpiera.com. It's actually a local um, art supply. Uh, from uh, art supplier sorry from Barcelona and they are actually um, open for 80 years now so it's kind of cool and it's pretty nice it's very family and uh, welcoming and warm so I'm really happy I discovered them anyhow so long story short I already had the gold set and today in Piera, I actually got these ones, like the pastel ones. I'm not sure you can actually see them. I have no idea how to film on this way, or like the work to go. I, I will have to figure out a better way. Uh, but anyhow, yeah, so I got the pastel ones. Um, these ones are very good quality and they're not too expensive at all. They're the Gansai type, but these are the metallics. Um, the only drawback, and that's the reason why I decided to reuse this uh, metal tin to keep them in, is that they come in this ridiculously bad quality, <laughs> uh, just a thin cardboard little box. And um, I don't like keeping in them, them in here. Just It's not cool because they don't have like a lid or anything like that. Otherwise, you would have to keep the actual cardboard box which is kind of weird to have to take it in and out so yeah I use that so I basically just put a bit of glue on the back and basically I can keep them in here which is pretty much more practical than it is uh, right here you can see that you have the same white gold which is number 906 this is a very common color of theirs and they actually have it in every single palette so I'm going to show you another Kuretake and I'll have another 906 in there but it is quite cool though because it's nearly transparent and i kind of like sometimes to use it on backgrounds because it kind of uh, gives them a bit of a 3d dimension and uh, yeah so that was what i got today i actually got so the pastels from kuretake Again, keeping on the Kuretake brand, I got the 36 pan watercolor set from them. So this is a very beautiful palette. It's like, it's cardboard, but it's like really thick and nice. And um, it's a Gansai style um, watercolor, which means that they're way more pigmented than the kind of like occidental type uh, of watercolors. And I really love the colors that you can have with these type of uh, watercolors. Uh, they're very intense and rich and pigmented, so I really enjoy them a lot. Let me see if I can show them all to you. So you have like the reds, the beautiful yellows, the ochres, the greens are beautiful. And God knows I don't like greens, but if you're drawing flowers, they come in handy. Um, you have the beautiful blues and then I'm sorry I have to turn the palette around so I can show you you also have some blacks browns um, even like uh, some sort of burgundy here and again as I was saying the 906 is in here again but I'm quite happy to see that these two golds they're not the actual same as the other golds I, I was I was afraid these three are were gonna be 
like duplicates of the um, the other palette but they're not uh, these are two other golds in addition to the ones that I have in the small palette there and um, the only duplicate is the actual 906 here which is kind of like the knacker pearl color so pretty pretty happy with that because I wanted this palette for so long and on Amazon it was something like 40 or 50 euro or even maybe 60 euro to get it uh, but because it was really well discounted uh, due to the extra 10% because of their 80th anniversary plus they had it on sale so I think I paid very, very little for this one compared on the prices that you see so I'm really happy I could get it uh, now we're gonna talk about paper Simply we're talking about Kuretake, we're going to start with um, uh, these two ones here. Um, I got two from this brand, Awagami Factory. I didn't know them at all, but I was just attracted to them because I like everything that is Japanese. And um, this one was a bamboo paper and uh, it's pretty cool. It's 70% bamboo and 30% washi. So it's acid free, um, recycled washi actually. Um, so it's kind of like, it's supposed to be quite green, quite, uh, um, you know, um, sustainable. And I don't know, I just, I just thought it was really pretty. And I don't know if you'll be able to see, but the texture is like super pretty. It's very soft. Uh, it doesn't have too much texture. Um, and I don't know, I just really enjoyed, it's 250 grams, um, it has 15 sheets, it's acid free, and uh, the other one is 220 grams, and it's 45% uh, uh, Kozo, which is a mulberry uh, fiber, and 55% cotton. So there were very different compositions and I was just so curious to actually try these papers and see how they come along. Um, they're very well presented and pretty, I don't know. I was just attracted to them, so I decided to get them. I mean, they were not expensive. They were somewhere around the 10 euro mark, so it's not too much. Then, um, because I got quite a few metallics there, I never tried to draw on black paper, so I wanted to give it a shot, and I got these two sizes, the A5 and the A4 from Clairefontaine. They are 300 grams, and um, they're 100% cellulose and cold pressed. Um, they're supposed to be rough, but to be honest with you, um, the, the the roughness it's the texture is quite mild i believe it's i mean you do have texture but it's not too crazy um but anyhow the idea was so that i could try and play around with black paper i hadn't before and i kind of wanted to um especially now that i have quite a nice set of metallics um and i also decided to try the a Royal Talents Van Gogh um, version of that because again these were really inexpensive I think it was like three or four euros for those it, like around the five euro mark tops and this one was like a tenner um, so it's not too bad they weren't too expensive and I thought well why not let's let's see what I can do with those and you know at least I can I can just uh, try and, and play around with them without being too conscious about them so yeah there were these ones so that I can try my metallics and play around with black paper and now if you guys know if you guys know this brand arches arches is actually a French brand that is very old they're very much specialized on 100% cotton paper and um, they're basically serious it is it says that they have been created in 1492 um, that's discovery of America people it's been a long time so yeah it, i was really excited to see those because one they don't come around that easy they're not very much um they're not easy to get um i mean i suppose i have family and friends so i could work it out but to be honest with you i only really got myself into watercolors last year 
and last year as you guys know was the start of the pandemic so we haven't been able to go to France that easily so in the future hopefully I'll be able to get them uh, more easily in France but right now it's not the case so when I saw them I was like yeah cool um, I'll be able to try them um, but I was like, yeah, there's no way in hell I can afford those because they're super expensive. Uh, but they had it at a ridiculous discount, plus the ten, the extra 10%. So I was able to get myself a few. They're all the same size apart from this one. This one is 10 by 14 inches. And this one is also 640 grams. So it's like, it's almost like cardboard. Um, it's cold press and uh, very smooth um, and I don't know if you know about these guys but these are so cool you get them they're like all black on the sides and actually when you open them up like this you actually have like a black sheesh on top and you're like how hang on how the hell do I get my paper now like please tell me this is supposed to be white paper because of all of a sudden I was like don't tell me I only got black paper what the heck have I done? And actually, no, they're super cool because they are basically protected by the black paper. So you have to basically cut them out here. You insert something right here and you open it up and then you have your paper available to you. Bear with me a second. I hope you can see that the texture on this one is ridiculously pretty. It's so beautiful oh there you go sorry I wasn't even filming in the right place so can you see that the grainage in here is so pretty the paper is really thick it looks ex super quality I'm really really excited to try that but it probably won't, won't be a while because I need to practice a bit more before I go ahead and do something on those but they are so cool um, then I have a, a rough one that is the 300 grams again and these now are all in 11 inches by 14 inches and they are all 300 uh, gram paper so this one is the rough one again Arches specializes in cotton so they are all 100% cotton as well and again, just like the other one, you open it up like this. I can't really film it too well, but hopefully you'll be able to see nonetheless. And this is, again, a rough texture. It's just that it's 300 gram paper instead of the uh, 640 that we had before. Then we have a hot pressed one, which is totally satined and it's so soft and smooth. Let me open it up for you because again, this bit of a, an installation for filming is not that easy for something this big. But as you can see, like the texture is super soft and really thin, um, but it's still a 300 uh, gram paper. So I think this will be really cool for those drawings that I want to make more kind of like crisp or precise or clean I think this is going to be really cool and then last but certainly not least we have a cold press with a um, thin grain Ooh, we have a visit I wonder if he's going to end up um, being on camera but we have Kyo nearby um, yeah so we have this one has a tiny bit of texture but not as much as the other one so it's kind of like an intermediate between the th the satin and the rough consistency so yeah that that's it guys um that's all i got um i'm pretty happy because to be honest with you i didn't blow my budget which i thought i would because to be honest when I saw everything, I was like, oh my god, these are so pretty, how the hell am I going to resist? But uh, thanks to the fact that they had quite a nice pricing thing going on, I was able to uh, stay reasonable, but still have quite a few things to uh, play around with and, um, you know, uh, keep on practicing and, and get better at watercolors and drawing. 
which to be honest with you it's about time i always was attracted to it but never dared um you know um to to really give a go um give it a go and to be honest with you i should i should have done it a long time ago but hey um you live and you learn um i suppose and uh yeah, I'm pretty excited to give a try to everything that I that I got and hopefully you enjoyed this video as well. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or anything, do let me know. Otherwise, I talk to you soon. Bye.